Welcome back to our discussion on The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. We're glad you stopped by. Say hello in the comments or email us at thegalamaforgals at gmail.com. We're excited to meet fellow book lovers and to have conversations with you. A little disclaimer in this episode. We do talk about COVID-19 toward the end of this episode. If this is bothersome, please be advised that you may need to skip a portion of this episode. Thanks again for hanging out. We hope you're amused and inspired. So in chapter 27, we're jumping ahead a little bit, mm-hmm. which is fine. There are actually quite a few chapters in this book, I think. So um, Yeah, I don't think they were very long chapters, most no. of them. So no. um, it says, Lila says, we all have our baggage. No one gets through life unscathed. Were you surprised by what happened at the bar? I was proud of Joe for taking down the jerk. Do you guys, do you think the jerk realized he was a jerk? And so for context, um, Lila and, oh, I can't even remember Joe. this. <laughs> yes, Joe, Joe Talbert. Um, they went out to, um, I think his, the bar that he works at? Uh, no, it's just or a bar. A bar? It was okay. just a bar, yeah. Just a bar. And um, by this time they're friends, so they're, they're going to go have a drink or whatever, or he is, and she's not. (laughs) And um, there is someone who said something lewd to Lila, someone in her past. Um, And yeah, Joe, basically like Lila left and Joe took care of the jerk and um, ran away before he could (laughs) get pounded himself. So (laughs) And and I did ask this question because Mm-hmm. it did it did and it didn't surprise me I guess because I'm older and I would think that you know I can look back and say gosh you know high school was a long time ago and people are just finding out who they are and you can't judge people on what they did in high school without knowing more about them and you know, the jerk was drunk, he's in his 20s, so I don't know if he was to that level yet, of even, and I don't know if he, re- and I don't think he even realized that he was being a jerk. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that a lot of the, a lot of that is, like, you know, people making snide comments or, like, being, just being outwardly a jerk. Like, I feel like they're in it more for the rush and, like, because they think they might be, like, feeling clever or, like, they're showing off in a way or, like, Mm -hmm. I don't think it usually has to do with them actually, well, I'm not going to make a generalization, like, you know, like, a jerk move is still a jerk move, but I feel like when, when you're in that mode, you're not thinking, oh, I'm being a jerk, like, I'm ruining someone's life right now. No, or like they're, they're just, night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're night, yeah. Um it's just easy to be just in the moment, like focused on your own adrenaline, your own cleverness, your own funniness, and just selfish, just self focused. <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah. I don't think he was necessary. And I was kind of glad that Joe punched out the guy. <laughs> I mean he punched him in the stomach so they didn't know yeah. what was he did it in a sneaky bouncer kind of way so that it didn't yeah, it wasn't look like he was actually like starting a fight. Like a, he didn't want a like, huge commotion. He just wanted to tell him, give, hit his point across without there being a whole scene about it. Right. <laughs> and I don't think violence is the way the answer to things, but I just felt like, oh my God, that guy really deserved that because he was being such a jerk to her and being such an ass. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I don't, don't know, know if we go over this. Is, I don't know if there was a question about it, but the reason he was being a jerk too, what we were kind of referring to is that um, I guess Lila was kind of sleeping around in high school, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, this was someone from that part of her life that still was seeing her as that person well, so that's she was also raped which we yes. find out after this incident right and i i just thought you know i i don't know 
I don't think this guy was involved. He was just at the school, but there were like photos and stuff around that um, were embarrassing to her and stuff. And so, I don't know. I just think, you know, I don't know. We know we can all be jerks and believe whatever we want to believe. And especially if we maybe don't like someone, we'll believe the worst of them mm -hmm. about them. But I just thought, man, he was so quick to judge her and assume she was someone that would just sleep around no matter what. And I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I just felt like he really deserved a good punch in the gut. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's like it is kind of refreshing, and I'm really glad that Joe didn't make a big deal out of it. Like, really, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't really make a big deal out of it. He just kind of needed to make that point because he cared about her. And right. Yeah, and like I agree. Like violence isn't. It's typically not going to have like a lasting thing, but you know, like. That guy made a decision and, you know, you can make your decisions, but sometimes there are consequences. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Sometimes people are just jerks to be jerks because. Yeah. Because they think it is funny and they know that it does hurt and they mm -hmm. just think that's funnier. Right. Yeah, it's a power trip for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you guys <laughs> think about, about Lila's past? and her character development. Um, did you think that it really like played a big part in how you were reading the story? Do you think it was absolutely necessary? Do you think it could have went into, been gone into a little bit further? I think it made sense why she was cautious, like being friends with Joe in the first place, like just, you know, passing in the hallway, not saying much and just kind of trying to keep to herself. Um, it also makes me wonder why she didn't, like, just run out of there and, like, not ever talk to him again, <laughs> you yeah. know, when he was blocking the door. Like, if I was mm -hmm. her, I feel like it would have been, mm -hmm. like, all the flags going off. Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, the past just begging to be relived. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And I think really it was important to know about her past just because... I mean, not only as a woman being upset about this, about the character, about the girl that Carl was accused of killing and raping and killing, but she was so adamant right from the beginning that Carl was scum. And that really helped kind of identify where her feelings were coming from. I mean, I yeah. think as a woman, we would all just feel that way naturally, but she seemed really vehement about it. And... Like, why are you talking to this guy? Like, look yeah, at, like and... he's horrible. See, and I don't even think a person would have needed to go through anything like that in order to feel those feelings. I think no, most... but she seemed to like really, from the way I read her characters, that she really felt them deeply and passionately, more than just the average. No, this is just wrong. It, it was more of a deeper sense, but that was my impression. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't feel like it really, like, her backstory, while it was, it added a little bit of depth to her, I don't really feel like it added much. Like, I don't feel like it was really needed to make the story any more, like, interesting or, like, deeper meaning or anything like that. Like, I feel like they could have left that out and it still would have been pretty much the same story. Well, that's true. I feel yeah, like it kind of helped, um, like, tie in, like, when her and Joe started dating, it, I feel like him knowing what had happened to her, sort of, like, and then her, like, bringing down the walls more to be, like, intimate with him, sort of, I don't know, kind of put another, like, layer on, like, I don't know. On their relationship. Her delicate side, I guess, and, mm -hmm. yeah, their relationship, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and then, like, be him basically, like, feeling, like, you get to see his softer side and, like, how mm. much, you know, he really does actually care and that he's not just, like, oh, my God, she's so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> but he's yeah. not just a creeper. <laughs> yeah, he's not just a creeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like I felt like her character. Like I can understand. Like it did help. It helped um, kind of bring to life some of the other aspects of the story, but. I even feel like their their romantic relationship wasn't even really needed. I I, I feel like I mm -hmm. I might have enjoyed it a little more if they had just stayed friends. Um, Same. And I've seen up me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just felt like I felt in a way that she I didn't was walk away from the book feeling like oh that their relationship really like complemented the takeaway. Like, I felt like, oh, that's right, they had a relationship, and like, I don't know. I feel like more of the one, like, of the un more unbelievable aspects of the story. To me. Well, that's know. true. Yeah. But, or, and I like, liked it because it, mm -hmm. the, that they had a relationship, because that also showed Joe's awareness of his self, and that he was willing to be open and vulnerable, because you know, in the past, he he didn't have relationships that lasted long. He ended them because, well, mostly because of his mother and his living situation, and he didn't want the girls to be like, hate him and ignore him afterwards, so he would break up with them before they would learn much about him. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. He talked about the one time when he brought a, a girl home, and his mom was, like, talking about her, calling her a whore. And Skank, and, like and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and screaming at yeah and and embarrassing so he you know mm -hmm. so and, and i felt like that was a good mix for him to like get into a relationship with someone who was also vulnerable and wanting to take it slow and i don't know i liked that mm -hmm. they had a relationship no that's that's really cool yeah i was wondering too if um because i do feel like i do feel like there is kind of like a through theme and I don't we can talk about what you guys think about what the the through theme is um, I don't know if, I don't think we get maybe to that until later so I, I just figure maybe it's good to talk about it now um, but I feel like since there is kind of a through theme or since it seems like we're finding similarities and different things I, it might have been easier for me to conceptualize the different discoveries for these characters if if the book had maybe been in different perspectives throughout or something like um i don't know like maybe some of the interviews with carl could have been from carl's perspective mm -hmm. um and we could have a a lila perspective chapter you know just so we could really solidify that through theme with each of the characters because i guess i'm kind of walking away from it feeling like I'd really have to like go through and like go with through with a highlighter for each character and see like how it kind of kind of all combines and relates. Well, I guess I get why they didn't really do a whole lot of different perspectives though. Like you really if you had stuff from Carl's perspective, you would have known straight off the bat like how things were. Like it would have detracted from the mystery of things. Yeah, but yeah, maybe not Carl, but yeah. And yeah, yeah I, I could know. see from yeah. maybe from uh, Lila's perspective, but at the same time, like I think it was perfectly fine just being in in his perspective because yeah, I think I, he I, was more the main person that we were supposed to focus in on. Right. Yeah. I feel like. Maybe, um, I, I don't mean to, like, pick apart the book, but, like, I'm just, I, the reason I'm just kind of, like, hmm, maybe if it was, like, this, I would have, like, because, I don't know. Enjoyed it more or something. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. enjoyed it, so. Yeah. Um, I think, never mind. Oh, no, no go for it. I, was gonna say, I think one of the reasons why I maybe didn't like it as much as I could have is just that it seemed pretty predictable. Like, you said earlier, Mom, that it could have been, like, a movie. It could be made into a movie, and it'd be pretty yes. easy. To me, that's exactly it. Like, it felt very movie plotish. Yes. Like, everything that happened, that's kind of why I was going along the lines of it kind of seemed a little unbelievable in parts, because it seemed more like movie happenings than perhaps what would actually happen in real life. Yeah. So, 
Mm-hmm. I don't know where I was going with that, but that's what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just trying to think of like the through theme for like what I think is kind of the theme is, you know, like the the first impressions need, you know, we need to question our first impressions and, mm-hmm. you know, um, the whole don't judge a book by its cover type of thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I, what are some other ones that you guys have pulled away? Because that can't be the, the only two. Okay. Like, that's... Well, it's interesting because we were watching something on TV last night. Can't remember what it was. And they mentioned a quote from some book that I don't remember the name of, an author by the name I don't remember the name of. But it was like, people have three lives. They have their public, or their mm-hmm. three selves. They have their public self, their private self, and then their secret self. And I thought this book really kind of hit on all three of those because we all have a face that we present to the public and we have our thoughts and everything and then our secret self of things that only we know that we did or that we think and Mm -hmm. whatever. And Mm -hmm. and I thought this book, I thought that that quote really fit this book. Yeah, it really does for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I don't believe in coincidences, but I thought it was pretty, <laughs> pretty fitting that I came saw across that, that came across it last night. So oh, yeah, <laughs> good timing. Mm-hmm. Yes. So chapter thirty-one, Pascal's Gambit. Mm-hmm. Um, have you heard of it before? And I have a thing in the way; I can't read the whole thing. Um, if you have a choice to believe in God or not, it is better odds to believe. We could apply this to wearing masks, too. We are in quarantine. We are in COVID times. If anyone watches this in the future, um, if you wear a mask and if if you wear a mask and it doesn't doesn't matter, no big deal. But if you wear a mask and it does matter, all the better. So have you guys heard of this before? I'd heard of the concept before, but I had never heard of it, like actually called Pascal's Gambit. Yeah. So like actually having like a name for what it's actually called. I have that this was the first time but I have actually heard of the concept before and it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah. and I have I've heard of it before. Um I think I've heard of it as Pascal's Gamble though, which is the same thing, but mm-hmm. Yeah, and I had heard of it before. Like you said I couldn't remember the name that went with mm-hmm. it, but it was like I knew there was the concept of of if you believe in God, you know, and there is no God, well, you're not off any worse than you were when you began, but if there is a God, you're going to be better off because you're not going straight to hell. And I had seen, after I had read this, this is happening to me a lot, after (laughs) I had read about Pascal's Gambit, someone had brought this up about masks, and I'm like, that's Pascal's Gambit, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So, That's a really good point. You know, That's so it's like point. really interesting. And it's like, you know, and we really could apply it to wearing masks, you know, mm-hmm. because there's many people that don't believe in wearing them. But mm-hmm. if you wear one and it doesn't matter, it's really no big deal. But mm-hmm. if, it, if you wear a mask and it really does matter, it's so you're doing interesting. A good thing. It, exactly. Yeah. And it's so interesting. I was listening to a, a Joe Rogan podcast and there were, they were talking about, or no, it wasn't actually, they did talk about masks on Joe Rogan, but this is actually a, um, this Jungian life. They're Jungian psychologists, Carl Jung. Um, oh. mm-hmm. And they were talking about the mask, about masks in general, but then they were kind of talking about, um, you know, the surgical masks too. And um, it's just so interesting how it's become like, it, it's more than just about like the science part of it. It's more like it's become like oh something really personal now. Like oh my gosh, like yeah. <laughs> it's become like a political. Gonna... Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. It's, like, it's like opinion over science. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like about your identity. Like what does it say about you? Like oh, like <laughs> it's you just so it's so interesting. You're an yeah. Anti-masker. No, that is funny. I don't know. I think, I think in this case, it 
would apply to masks to people who think they're stupid. Yes. So, like, mm -hmm. like, I know, or I, well, I would like to say that I know that scientifically there are facts that prove that if you wear a mask, you're going to help stop the spread. So, wear a mask. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. But, right, for the people who are like, masks are stupid and it's going against my freedom, well, then this is, like, the argument for them. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. And um, I can't remember why it was even brought up in the book. Chapter 31. Oh, yeah, I don't either. Um, it's like, I'm I know it was, it now. I know it was Carl that mentioned it. Um, oh, about believing in God. I think it was, yeah. In he believed God. in God, and then he didn't, and then he did again. And I think, I think you're right. Oh, check it out. Oh yeah, page three. Oh well, page three hundred three on the large print version. So, um. oh, so like, cause he he wanted to go to prison, right? right. Because he not because he did the crime, that right? But he went he, to prison for, but and he said, um, he's like, you want to know the real kicker? After all the time I spent wanting to die, trying to die, it took prison to make me want to live. You liked prison? Of course not. No one likes prison, but I started reading and thinking and trying to understand myself and my life. Then one day I was laying in my back contemplating Pascal's Gambit. So he goes mm -hmm. through that. Not much of a reason to be religious. Not much at all, he said. I was surrounded by hundreds of men waiting for the end of their lives, waiting for that something better that comes after death. I felt the same way. I wanted to believe there was something better on the other side. I was killing time in prison, waiting for that crossover. And that's when Pascal's Gambit popped into my head, but with a small twist. What if I was wrong? What if there was no other side? What if, in all the eons of eternity, there was the one and only time that I would be alive? How would I live my life if that were the case? Know what I mean? What if this is all there was? I really liked that perspective too. So it almost um, like flips it, like it takes right. it, but then it flips it like, yep. what if this, there is all, this is all there is. Mm -hmm. Then like, let's try and make, make it the, the best. Of it. Yeah, the one thing it. that frustrated like me that. with that, with that, I feel that way. yeah, mm -hmm. I, it is a little frustrating to me personally, just because, um, just a, because of the dichotomy of the thought, just, like this or that, like, you know, like just black because, or white, no, gray. yeah, right. Like just because, you know, even if there is eternity, like there is eternity doesn't mean that, you know, like this, this life doesn't matter or like, it doesn't matter what you do in this life. Like, yeah, I don't oh, know. Right. That too. Right. Yeah. He was just waiting to die at a crossover. Right. Like he, I mean, he still could have done things from prison. I mean, Paul, the, the apostle Paul was in prison when he wrote all of those epistles and, you know, there's still things you can do from prison. <laughs> it doesn't mean like your, your life is ended to, regardless where you are, you can, you still have value and can still change someone's life. Well, and I think that's what he was getting at there at the end is that, hey, this, I don't have to just wait to die. I can do something and enjoy and make as much of this day as I can. Right. Or each day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, it really resonated with me the fact that he wanted to go, that he was okay with going to prison for a charge or charges that he didn't commit for the specific crime but because he felt like he still needed to pay for the debts of the crime that he had done during war yeah mm -hmm. yeah like i felt like that is that is an amazing soul right there it feels like, pretty noble yeah yeah like yeah. i did wrong <laughs> right. yes and no because i mean if you think about it yeah he's he's paying the price for the war crime or whatever, you know, the war, what happened in the war mm -hmm. now, but someone else is getting off for the crime that was actually committed. True. That is very like, true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And he was just depressed. Like, exactly. that's true. he yeah. wanted to yeah. die and he figured, I'm just, I'll just die in prison. Yep. Like, yeah. Like he couldn't, right? Because he had bought a gun, he was going to kill right. Yeah. But I mean, there wasn't really anything he could personally do anyway. So it was kind of like, 
for for what? What do you mean? He couldn't to defend hurt him. himself. He yeah, like defended himself. Well, I'm he sure he. Well, one I'm of the sure. things they talked about too was like the fact that he he pushed for a rush trial. Right. And oh, that's like, true. Yeah, he that's true. was basically like just yep, get it over you. with, whatever. Yeah, like, that's a good point. And, and he never put up a defense or said, you know, he didn't try to help himself. Right. right. That's a really good innocent. point. He was yeah. just kind of more along for the ride than actually like. Right. He's like, yep, put me away. I don't deserve to be around. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting. I didn't really think about it in terms of like. I was thinking of in terms of like, oh, wow, like, you know, he really felt like he needed to repent of this. Like, he really and, and felt he the need that, like, to do that. But then I yeah. wasn't thinking about the other side, like, oh, my God, like, there's this other guy that, I mean, it's, out there. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> now, are there any questions that ask what his crime, what his war crime was? I don't think so, but yeah, we can talk about that. Um, if someone want to summarize that, I can do it. Otherwise, I can do the best I can. Um, sure, I can do that. So when he was over in Vietnam, his sergeant raped a young girl, and he would not go along with it, and he got the little girl out, and, she, and later she got killed by that sergeant or whatever, and then... There was some place else and he was going to rape another girl and he killed the sergeant. He murdered the sergeant that was doing the raping. And that's when he talked in one place, he talked about he killed people, but he murdered a person. Mm -hmm. And that sergeant was the one he had murdered. And he felt bad about taking his life and hiding it. I mean, because I can't remember if, he burnt the building down or if it got fired upon i, I think don't, it got fired upon that's what i was thinking it got bombed yeah um and so that was the murder that he was talking about and yet again once again i was like yeah dude all right i'm glad you killed that you know it's like don't feel bad about killing him <laughs> and, and i shouldn't say that but that's how i felt <laughs> It's so hard to to not feel just objective about something that is so blatant, like yeah. so blatantly wrong. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I had dogs come back in. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done that sooner and more often yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, he did feel guilty about that. Um, where do you think he, this is completely speculative, of course, but mm -hmm. um, where do you guys, oops, I hope that didn't do anything. I hit the enter button. Mm -hmm. I don't think it did anything. Where do you guys think that he would be had he not been, had he not gone to prison? Like, what do you, what do you think he might have gotten himself into or I think his he life would have gone? Himself. Yeah, I think so too. Probably, yeah. Or if he didn't accomplish that, then he would just be out on the streets, um, homeless and alcoholic and just barely surviving. But I think he really would have killed himself. Yeah, it sounded like he, that really roughed him up good, yeah. bad. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We hope you've been amused by our antics, inspired to read, and maybe even feel encouraged to find or create your own book club. At 100 subscribers, we are doing a book giveaway. At 200 subscribers, for our fifth round reading, we will randomly pick from your book suggestions. So, we encourage you to share our channel with other book lovers and book lovers to be. What are your thoughts about Pascal's Gambit in relation to some other aspects of life? For example, in this episode, we discussed how it might relate to wearing masks to prevent the spread of COVID 19. Share your thoughts. Join the discussion in the comments below. 
We'll see you next week for part three of our discussion on the life we bury. Happy reading.